here's the latest cruise news with your host, the Tall Man. Hey there, everybody. It is a week of breaking news around the world and specifically for the cruise industry. Welcome, everybody. I am uh, your host, Robert, a.k.a. the Tall Man. There we go. <laughs> Normally, my lovely wife is next to me, but she is over there on the other computer going to be feeding me information if we need it. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome. We appreciate y'all being here. For those who don't know, um, one of the major bridges uh, in Baltimore that leads to the port of Baltimore has been struck by a container vessel and the bridge has completely collapsed. Um, we do have video footage of this. Uh, I'm going to warn those uh, if you have little ones around, uh, this video could be a little bit disturbing. Uh, so I would urge you at this time to make sure that they are not watching if you feel that this is footage you don't want them to see. Okay, here we go. All right, so at approximately 1.28 this morning, a container vessel, the container vessel, the name is the uh, Dali, uh, was departing the port of Baltimore, heading out to sea. It appears, though it may have lost power, and struck one of the piers of the bridge. As you can see in the video playing, the bridge has completely collapsed. Um, now, fortunately, this did happen in the middle of the night. However, there was a crew of people working on the bridge. So this is the chain of events. As the vessel lost power and lost control, it did issue a May Day. Fortunately, the bridge officials were able to close the bridge as quickly as possible. Now, the crew that was working on the bridge was still on the bridge. Uh, there were a few vehicles that did go into the water. Fortunately, um, out of all the people that were missing, all have been found except for six. The six people that are still missing are related to the crew that was working on the bridge at the time. Now, there is a look of where the bridge is in relationship to the cruise terminal. Now, why did we decide to come on and bring you this news? Because a, bl a bridge collapse isn't necessarily cruise news, if you will. However, the cruise terminal is now blocked. Uh, there'll be no traffic entering the port or exiting the port um, of Maryland, um, I would say for an undeclosed amount of time. Uh, all efforts right now are for search and rescue, uh, but once search and rescue is completed, uh, they will move into, I'm assuming, uh, removing the debris. Uh, I do have some pictures. Oh, let's see here. Sorry, this is, this is the, what the bridge used to look like. Um, it is a mi uh, just a little over a mile and a half long. And as you can see, it's a pretty clear span. Uh, however, it was one of those middle uh, supports that that container vessel struck. Um, here's sort of what the damage looks like now. And we have another picture as well. That's the same. There we go. Okay. And so uh, it, it is just an absolute uh, tragedy. And our thoughts and prayers go out to all the family members for those who are currently missing. Now, as far as the cruise industry goes, uh, Royal Caribbean and Carnival both call uh, to the port uh, of Baltimore, all right? Uh, the Carnival legend and the Carnival pride sail out of there, as well as the Royal Caribbean vision of the seas. Now, since currently there is no traffic in and out, all cruises booked in Baltimore are more than likely going to be rerouted. Uh, let's just call it for an undetermined amount of time. Uh, the federal government is involved, and the president has said that they're going to cover the cost. And uh, Army Corps of Engineers is also uh, not on the scene, moving to the scene um, as well to facilitate. Obviously, the Port of Baltimore is a huge economic uh, center for Baltimore. Uh, 
the, and then never mind the 30,000 people that cross that bridge every day are now going to have to seek uh, different routes to get to work. So it is going to be imperative that they clear the debris once the investigation is over uh, to open the port back up. Now, how long is that going to be? With the amount of steel and wreckage that is in the canal, if you will, leading in and out of the port, my guess it's going to take some time. So the story is still developing. Um, uh, press releases issued by Carnival and Royal have not made any determination at this point because this is still a very fluid situation. <coughs> Excuse me, until it is not a fluid situation, it's going to be hard for them to determine how long the deviations are going to happen. Uh, let me see here. Let's get out of there. All right. So uh, just uh, once again, for those joining us late, the port of Baltimore, uh, the bridge has collapsed. A container vessel uh, by the name of Dali has struck one of the major piers there that support the bridge, as you can see in the video, uh, collapsing, uh, completely collapsing the bridge. Uh, blocking all traffic into and out of the port. Um, uh, one of the press releases we saw, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, uh, is a segment of interstate on uh, 695 encircling Baltimore. It spans the uh, uh, Patapsco River, uh, which provides access to the Maryland Cruise Terminal. Although no cruises are currently in port, the incident raises concerns over the immediate impact on the cruise industry with several cruises scheduled in upcoming weeks, uh, facing potential alterations or delays. So for those in the cruise industry, uh, cruisers, if you will, that have planned cruises out of the port of Baltimore in the next, I would say, two to four weeks, maybe even a bit longer. Uh, if you've booked directly with the cruise lines, please contact them. If you have contact or booked with a travel agent, please contact them. Uh, the cruise lines will, I'm sure, be on top of this. Their port agents are aware, of course, of the situation. As I said, Lisa is feeding me information uh, right now. Um, here's another recent press release. Our thoughts are those affected by this tragic accident. It is premature for us to com comment on possible impacts to upcoming sailings. Uh, this was from Carnival Cruise Lines. Uh, from Royal, it says, we are deeply saddened. Oh, sorry, here, I'm trying to move this up so I can read it. We are deeply saddened by the tragedy and the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge and extend our heartfelt prayers to all those impacted. We are closely monitoring the situation and our port logistics team is currently working on alternatives for Vision of the Sea, uh, Vision of the Sea's ongoing and upcoming sailings. So again, we want to make sure that you guys are well aware and kept up to speed. So first of all, I want to say thank you all for joining us. Thank you all for the thumbs up. But it gets a little applause. Uh, yeah. All right. Antonio, he says, my prayers are out to those who were affected by the accident. Absolutely. Uh, as I mentioned, there are still six people missing. Uh, and, and they are all uh, workers that were on the bridge working on uh, the bridge at the time of the collapse. Um, anyone else? Uh, I, I watched a longer video of that in the traffic going by, even though it was 1.30 in the morning. I was like, oh, man, oh, man. And then the traffic came to a stop. And so, obviously, as I mentioned, um, the cruise ship did issue a mayday. And uh, the Port Authority, uh, or whoever operates the bridge, I believe it's the Port Authority, they uh, stopped traffic as quickly as possible. Uh, to keep additional traffic from getting on the bridge, and it was just those on the bridge that had to clear the bridge before the actual impact. Um, ultimately, there are still just six people missing, and our thoughts and prayers goes out to, uh, to all of those people. Angela, welcome to the show. Nurse Tara, good afternoon. Appreciate you being here. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, Angela says, hello. Prayers for all as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Craig, hey, bu hey, buddy, haven't seen you in a long time. Uh, he's uh, sending prayers to all those affected as well. Nurse Tara says, Baltimore is your home port, and you're still in shock. I, I, um, it just, it's just gut-wrenching to watch the video of, of that ship hitting uh, the pier. There are some other videos out there. I wasn't going to grab every single video, 
Um, but there was one showing it sort of coming out and coming around and you can see it heading straight and then all of a sudden it just veers off. Which, by the way, due to the timeline and everything that transpired, terrorism is not on the plate. This seems like a uh, pure accident, um, as sad as that is. Um, however, um, all the uh, government authorities that have to be investigating are still investigating, but they are at this moment ruling out terrorism. This is just a tragic accident. Okay. Angela says Baltimore is also her home port. Yeah. Hello, Macrina. Welcome. She says my niece has a friend who just sailed out Saturday on a mission to seas. Not sure where it will dock on its return. I'm sure as this develops through the day, this happened in the early wee hours of the morning. I would have come on earlier, but one, we were not planning on uh, being up early this morning, so we didn't get up early. And two, uh, once we heard of the incidents, we wanted to make sure we gathered as much information as possible. Um, this is just from Lisa. Uh, NorthNewJersey.com and AOL.com report that shipping routes for cargo and cruise ships may undergo significant alterations, potentially rerouting vessel vessels to the port of New Jersey. You know, obviously, they're going to look for the closest port, right? So uh, to uh, Macrina's uh, comment, who has someone that's on board the Vision of the Seas, obviously, those who drove in, their vehicles are parked at the port in, in, in a parking garage. And so they're going to want to get uh, the ship docked as close as possible to Baltimore. So those currently affected on the ships, um, it'll be easier for them to get back to the port uh, to finish their vacation. For those with upcoming sailings, obviously to keep these ships as close as possible to Baltimore, so rerouting uh, your plane, buses, trains, whatever, uh, making changes to your uh, travel itinerary uh, will be the least affected as possible. Um, and so, uh, again, very fluid situation, everybody. McQueen says, drove over that bridge many times. Yeah, Lisa and I were there just last year, drove over that bridge. And Craig says, um, an, uneduc an uneducated guess that ships will use Norfolk for now. It's possible. Um, Norfolk is pretty close. Uh, Lisa just found a comment about New Jersey. Um, that's fairly close. Uh, so uh, we'll see. Uh, N Nurse Tara says she has sailed under that bridge many times. Yeah, be in your home port. If you've gone out of cruises, uh, you have sailed out and under that bridge. Um, it is going to be uh, a long time. And obviously the bridge will be reconstructed. Uh, at least the president has uh, made a comment to that effect. Uh, but unfortunately, now is not the time to talk about that. Uh, it's to talk about uh, uh, wishing those uh, families our thoughts and prayers um, and hopes that um, it's possible that uh, there are some survivors still, um, as well as in recovery efforts. And that's what all uh, the energy should be poured into right now. Um, reconstruction, that's going to come, but it'll come a little bit later. This is the main link for Pittsburghers to go to the East Coast. Yeah, it, it, it is. Yep. So there's going to be a lot, approximately, the, uh, the information I received was approximately 30,000 people a day uh, cross that bridge. So there are now 30,000 cars, 30,000 people that are going to have to, to take another route. Um, I actually have a port map here, guys. And so you can see the route. Um, it's, it's a nice direct bypass of downtown Baltimore, if you will. Um, and so now the infrastructure that is there is going to bear uh, a heavier burden of traffic from people coming from uh, the south, going to the north, if you will, or vice versa, um, or who live uh, out in the, if you call it, what is it, the, Dun the Dundalk area there. Um, let me see if I can go back over here and, and just zoom in a little bit. I know that you guys can't see this, but... Uh, you got Sparrows Point, you got Edgemere, Dundalk, uh, North Point State Park out there. That's all on that little jet out where the words Francis Scott Bridge Collapse um, that you see, the Francis Scott Key Bridge Collapse. Um, those are all cities, if you will, or the state park that are in that area. Um, obviously, the easiest way to get to those cities is from the 695. Now, ultimately, um, you can still use the 695 coming from the north. Uh, to get down there, right, if you're coming off of 95 and take the 695 
but you just cannot cross the bridge. Obviously, the bridge is no longer there. So you're going to have to take the 895 um, and take a bit of a detour. Now, as I mentioned, that's 30,000 cars a day that cross that bridge. And so now they're going to have to find a different route. Uh, McQueen says the ship lost power and looked to be smoking prior to the strike. Um, yeah, the power went off and on several times. Um, if you've watched uh, um, the clip that I have, I, I just edited it down to be a very short clip. And so it's hard to see, but the power was going on and off on the ship. And so uh, they're obviously, they were having issues um, with their generators, which uh, that is also what helps steer the ship. Um, there was an animation that I saw on one of the news broadcasts that had uh, like the cruise mapper type time lapse of the ship. And you can see it leave its dock and circles around and heads out. And it's going nice and straight, nice and straight. And then just really at the last couple seconds, it just veers a little bit to the right, um, which put it out of the, the channel, if you will, and right into that pier. But again, there is the port map. So, yes. A nurse says, definitely, Macrina. I can't imagine those last few people that just crossed prior to the impact, right? I just, I, I, I just, I can't imagine either. I, I just, it's, uh, it's mind blowing. Macrina says, yeah, traffic was stopped, fortunately. Exactly. Um, they, uh, the, the, the captain of the vessel, um, thank the Lord, he thought quick enough to issue the Mayday, um, saw that he had no control of his vessel and that uh, the people in charge of the bridge were able to stop the traffic. Because again, if you go out and watch a full video, and maybe I can find a full video and download it here real quick, but um, it, uh, uh, you see traffic going across. And it wasn't like rush hour traffic, but you know, two cars one way, and then two cars another way, then one car. I mean, it was steady enough. And then I'm watching, I'm like, oh no, oh no. Um, and then traffic stopped. I was like, oh. Um, and then ultimately, uh, well, we know the end result. And unfortunately, you can see the lights that are flashing on the bridge. That is the construction crew that was there working on the barricades of the bridge. Um, six people are still missing as of this hour. Um, so search uh, uh, and rescue is going on at this time. And so um, it's just unfathomable to, to, to see that we'll bring up this picture again i mean these container vessels guys they're huge you know it's one thing to watch a video off from the distance like that but a lot of people just don't realize exactly how big that bridge is uh it was it's a mile and a half long 1.6 to be exact uh these container vessels are are also just gigantic um, the Dali, I don't have any information on how big the Dali is. Let me see if I can get that for you guys. Uh, contain, container vessel Dali. Let's see if we can pull that up for you. Uh, built in 2005. Or, I'm sorry, 2015. Oh. Uh, Let's see if there's stats on it. Obviously shows where it's at. I'm looking for gross tonnage. It's uh, nearly 100,000 gross tons. Uh, it says summer dead weight. Not sure what that means. Uh, it's 100 and almost 17,000 tons. Again, built in 2015. Uh, it is 48 feet wide and an overall length. Uh, sorry, 48 meters uh, wide and 300 meters long uh quick conversion three to one i don't know the exact conversion but you know it's it's a little it's over a thousand feet long and it, it they're huge guys they're absolutely huge um and so to see a picture like that with that massive vessel um or even if you're watching the videos and see the bridge collapsing like it's nothing it, it's uh just mind-blowing uh, it was reported that people as far away as 10 miles away um, were able to hear the collapse. Just look, just the steel folding. It's just unimaginable, everybody. Unimaginable. So, again, cruise industry effects. There are three ships that call this uh, port home. At least 
right in the area that is being affected right now. Um, uh, the Carnival, where are we here? <clears throat> the Carnival Legend, the Carnival Pride, and the Vision of the Seas. Now, the Vision of the Seas is currently on a cruise, seven or eight night uh, cruise, and so those that are on the ship are going to have to uh, debark from a different port. That information uh, is fluid right now. We don't know exactly where was due to depart from Baltimore on March 31st, which is in just a few days. Um, Lisa has just sent me something else here. I'll look at that in a minute. And the Carnival Pride um, uh, does not arrive to Baltimore until late April, April 21st. And so um, at this time, I would imagine it is not going to be sailing out of Baltimore. That would be affected as well. Let me just pull up uh, Lisa's info she's like i said very fluid guys uh oh that's the one you just sent me lisa Ugh. no um i got what you sent me was our, the the first thing hang on okay that's fine that's fine um who is this from so from cnn uh search and rescue crews are using, uh, they used infrared and sonar technology to mark five vehicles underwater um, in the river, three um, of which are believed to be passenger vehicles, uh, Wallace told CNN on Tuesday. There are eight dive teams made up of 50 divers working on the rescue effort, he added. Uh, there are no known victims in the water who were in vehicles on the bridge at the time of the accident. Uh, we have an unspeakable tragedy says the mayor of Baltimore, Brandon Scott. So, like I said, very fluid situation, everybody. For those in the cruise industry, um, if you're due to be sailing out of the port of Baltimore anytime soon, please get with your crew, uh, respective cruise line, either Royal Caribbean or Carnival, um, and or your travel agents to find out what deviations are going to transpire and how long. Uh, again, just a quick recap here. Uh, the Francis uh, Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore has been struck by a container vessel, as you can see here in the video, uh, causing the complete failure and collapse of that bridge. Uh, unfortunately, to get in and out of the cruise port, you must go under that bridge. And so all traffic in and out of the port is temporarily halted. Um, the amount of time is unknown. Uh, so please stay tuned to Think For Everyone Impacted. So horrible. Absolutely. We agree 1,000%. Nurse Tara says uh, you were watching uh, the same way, saying hurry, hurry, hurry. I know, right? Um, in the end, it's one, you know, when you know the end result of a tragedy and something's going on, you're like, oh, come on, come on, come on. Uh, it's like watching the movie Titanic, right? We all know that the Titanic sank when you, you're just, you know, Come on, come on! Um, same thing for those people driving. Um, all those weights uh, are without cargo. Thank you very much. Um, so um, uh, imagine a small icon of the seas or an XL class ship. Exactly, right? Uh, but wider. Um, well, maybe not as wide as uh, um, an icon because uh, the icon is 200 and something feet wide. Um, if I remember correctly, it said it was 30 meters. So that's at least 180 feet wide. I mean, it's, it's huge, huge. Um, much bigger than a cruise ship that home ports there in Baltimore. The ship uh, was massive. Correct. Uh, the ships that do home port uh, from the cruise industry in Baltimore. Um, the Carnival Legend. Uh, oh, good Lord. The Con Carnival Legend. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me, baby. Do -do 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 -do. It's, there it is. The Carnival Legend. Uh, built in 2002. Just refurbished in two, uh, 2018. It's uh, 88 uh, and a half thousand tons. 88,000 tons. It's 963 feet long and 106 feet wide. It holds uh, a little over 2,100 passengers. The vision of the seas was also being impacted by this. Got to wait for the computer here. Um, it was built in 1998. It is 78,000 and a half uh, tons. Again, 78,000 tons. <coughs> Excuse me, everybody. Uh, 915 feet and 106 feet wide. It holds 2,500 passengers. That's the vision of the seas. And the Pride, which is supposed to be arriving there in late April, 
which again, it's obviously going to be diverted because I imagine it's going to take a little bit of time for them to clear uh, the, the channel. But the Pride is 88,500 tons, uh, 963 feet long, 106 feet wide. So yeah, uh, that container vessel was, uh, I would say, significantly bigger than any of the cruise ships that sail um, out of that terminal there, uh, port, if you will. Okay, uh, Tara says the legend went out Sunday. Yeah, so the legend's affected um, as well as the vision. The pride is not there yet. Um, and so I am sure we'll be getting uh, news and information from people that are on these ships because obviously um, I'm sure most of them are well aware of the situation. Um, and so they're getting texts and emails and things because Wi-Fi is so good, which is how we're able to broadcast live to you guys when we're on a ship. And so I'm sure they're well aware. Um, Lisa sending me some other information here. Uh, uh, there we go. Here's another bit of news, guys. Oops, let me grab this and throw this over there. Um, Amir M. Harrison, this is from the Washington Post. A spokeswoman for the port said in an email that the status of upcoming cruise ships uh, schedules is not yet known. At this time, we do not know how long vessel traffic will be suspended. As soon as it is determined, we will provide an update. Until then, please keep those involved in your prayers. Absolutely. Royal Caribbean International left Saturday on a 12-night Southern Caribbean cruise that plans to return April 4th. The cruise line said in a statement that is closely monitoring the situation, and our port logistics teams is currently working for, on alternatives for vision of the seas, ongoing and upcoming uh, sailings. Thank you, Lisa. Perfect. Yeah, so uh, I can only imagine that, uh, you know, if, if you're looking, you know, at, at this, uh, there, there's a lot of steel there. And it is now in not deep, deep water, but it, it's not all sitting on the surface. And so that is all going to have to be uh, lifted up, accounted for, and moved out of the way. Now, the port of Baltimore being such a strategic port and so much commerce going in and out of there, they're obviously going to put every effort into clearing that as quickly as possible uh, because no further com commerce in or out can take place. Now, it has also been noted that currently uh, truck traffic for the port, so containers that are already in the port, that is still uh, happening. They haven't closed the port uh, for in and out traffic, uh, meaning on the land, right? So if there are containers uh, that are, have already been offloaded and sitting in the port, trucks are entering the port to pick up those containers. So the impacts are for those that are supposed to be delivered. Uh, MSC Harrison. Uh, okay, this just in from Lisa. Carnival Legend uh, set off Sunday on a seven-day Bahama cruise. Uh, the ship is scheduled to return March 31st and depart for its next sailing the same day. Carnival Pride is supposed to be sailing, uh, start sailing from Baltimore next month. Again, April 21st, we told you about that. Uh, and it is most doing mostly Bahamas and Eastern Caribbean. Carnival Cruise Line spokesman Matt Lup Lup Lapoli, excuse me, sorry, Matt. Uh, uh, again, Carnival Cruise Line spokesman Matt Lapoli said in an email that it was premature for us to comment on possible impacts. The, the, the same thing uh, that everybody is saying at this time. All right. So we just wanted to make sure that we got you uh, the up to date information of what's going on. Uh, we'll have a couple more comments from you guys right now. Nurse Tara says Carnival Pride is scheduled to replace the legend in April. There you go. Absolutely. And the Pride is scheduled. Oh, you, you put the comment twice. <laughs> Or my system recorded it twice. So there you go. So, uh, yes, a tragic day uh, uh, in the Northeast. Uh, the Francis Scott Key Bridge that spans uh, the entry to the port of Baltimore uh, on Highway 695 has been struck by a container vessel that you can see right there. Uh, it, it has completely collapsed the bridge. Um, port operations from a container vessel or commercial uh, ship traffic is uh, completely halted in and out of the port. Uh, the channel that the cruise ships and or container vessels or any vessel for that matter would use is now blocked uh, by this incident. And so currently uh, what is going on is search and rescue. There are six people unaccounted for. 
Uh, the people that are unaccounted for are those who are actually working on the bridge. There was a, a crew working on the barriers in the bridge. Um, all uh, public traffic fortunately had been stopped just moments before, and uh, it seems as though uh, any of the public, if you will, um, is okay. However, uh, our thoughts and prayers go for the workers and their families um, that have not been located yet. Macrina says, oh, where'd it go? Macrina says, I remember last year at Port of Miami when a small pleasure craft sunk. That's right. Uh, the port was closed for half a day. So this will take much, much longer to investigate and clear the waters. Uh, of, absolutely. This is not just about a ship sinking. <laughs> uh, uh, this container vessel uh, leveled a bridge that was built in the 70s, right? Um, and so, uh, for, yeah, Lisa says it took five years to build a bridge to begin with, right? So uh, this is going to be something that continues on into the distant future because the bridge will have to be constructed. Um, now's not the time to talk about it, and, but uh, ultimately that will happen. Um, it's just a matter of when will it happen. Uh, but uh, it took five years to build and about uh, eight seconds for it all to come down. Um, but from an investigation standpoint, there's a lot of stuff that's going to have to be done um, because of loss of pot potential loss of life. Um, uh, what happened to the ship? All, all these different things. And then they're not going to be able to clear the wreckage until all of the facts surrounding the incident um, have been gathered, um, like for instance, uh, with with an accident that happens on the road that involves any kind of fatality. The road is closed. Uh, the, the local state troopers are there. They do their investigation. They paint lines and take tape measures and video and talk to people and gather all the data. Because once the area is cleared, then the data slash evidence is also cleared. And so before they can go through the process of clearing this channel um, the investigation is going to have to at least from a gathering standpoint of gathering information uh, and, and uh, evidence um, that will have to be done first um, I would think that is going to be done very fast because they need to get this channel opened I'm sure you all would agree all right so there you go guys um, we are going to call it uh, quits uh, for this video here. Uh, we want to thank you for being with us. Again, just a quick recap as we finalize this. The port of Baltimore is uh, temporarily closed because of a bridge collapse. Uh, the container vessel Dali has struck a pier, uh, collapsing the bridge. If you are on the Carnival Pride, the Carnival Legend, or the Royal Caribbean Vision of the Seas, make sure you call your cruise line and or your travel agent to find out what effects this is going to happen to your cruise. Until we see you all again, be safe.